Hi everyone, this is Sabit Zahin and today I'm going to demonstrate how to create a password vault. We need passwords everywhere, but do you think about how secure our passwords really are? Some of the most common passwords range from 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 to birth dates and even literally password itself. Such passwords are vulnerable and can usually be cracked quite easily using methods as simple as guessing or a brute force dictionary attack. And we often have multiple passwords for multiple accounts which makes it even tougher to pick strong passwords and remember them. So what if we had a password vault that could suggest strong yet easy to remember passwords and also store them securely? So without any further ado, let's get on with it. We will be creating our password vault using Python 3.6. I will be assuming that you, the viewer, will have some familiarity with Python. If not, then it might be a good idea to pause this video learn some basic Python first and come back again later. I'm going to use PyCharm as the IDE. I have already created a new project and a Python file and I have also defined some helper functions that we're going to use throughout the video to speed up the process. Now the letters are the set of lowercase letters we're going to use for our passwords. The script function removes punctuations from a text. The get file path function takes in a name and an extension and returns an absolute file path. And I'm going to explain this next function in a bit. So this is a class that we are going to use to generate strong readable passwords. We're going to modify the get password method which currently returns a random password of the given length. Why don't you run and see what it outputs? And what do you have? Surely this seems like a strong password, but how do you even pronounce this, let alone remember? But can we do better? Can we generate random yet readable passwords? Actually we can. Now if you look at the English language, you can find certain patterns between characters. The first character of any word is more likely to be a S than any other character. If the first character is T, the next character is most likely H, or maybe an E. But certainly not B or N because what English word actually starts with TB or TN? So to find these patterns, we can analyze an English corpus and then generate readable passwords character by character. The first character can be generated randomly and each subsequent character will be generated based on the probability of it occurring after the last type character, which we can roughly estimate from the corpus. Let's give an example to be more clear. Suppose our dictionary contains the following words AB, ABS, ABIS, AC, ADD, ADA. So, whenever the previous character is A, the next character is B three times, uh, C one time, and D two times. So, if the first character is A, the next character is B with a probability of 3 by 6, C with a probability of 1 by 6. D with a probability of 2 by 6 and probability for any other character is 0. So what this means is that the next character is more likely to be B than C or D given the previous character is A. Similarly, it is twice as likely to be a D than a C. If our corpus is large, these probabilities will be quite accurate and we can use these trends to generate words similar to the English language which makes it easier to pronounce and remember than completely random words. Let's modify our password generator accordingly. Now I already downloaded a sample corpus and added that in our project called corpus.txt. Let's pass the corpus to the init function and use default corpus if no corpus is provided. Let's make the corpus lowercase and remove all punctuations. Set the modified corpus. And also let's uh, define a function to calculate the probabilities. Going through the function to understand what it's really doing. 
So basically here count is a table of size 26 by 26 all set to 0. 26 because we will be using 26 lowercase letters for our passwords. Now we are iterating through all pairs of consecutive characters in this line and checking if both of them are lowercase letters then convert those letters to the position in alphabet to be used as indexes for our count table and just finally incrementing the corresponding positions by 1. And in this part is just calculating the probabilities from the count table. So for each possible first character, let total be the count of characters occurring after it. If total is 0, assign each next character equal probability because this means that we don't have any information for this current first character. So otherwise for each next character just divide its count um, by the total to get its probability. Now the final part, the function to get a random readable password. For the first character, let's modify this function. So for the first character, we can generate a random character uniformly from A to Z. Every other character will be generated from the probability of it to occur after the last character. This is the first character, so we're going to generate a random character. We're going to use the choices function to generate a random character using weight weighted probabilities. So this function will be returning a list, so we're only going to take the first item because we only need one character and add that to the password. Finally, converting the password to a string. And tada, we are almost done. Let's see how the passwords look like. Wow, so this already seems better and more readable than before. We can test our password strength in this side. Hmm, it seems we have a reasonably strong password. Passwords automatically. To implement the vault itself, we can store all the passwords for different accounts in key value pairs stored them in an encrypted file using a root password. So let's create a class for that. So the init will take in two arguments, the root password and the file name where the passwords are going to be stored. And we are also going to have two file paths for the encrypted and decrypted file. We can use the get file path function defined before. So to encrypt and decrypt files easily, we can use the pfish library which uses PyCrypt underneath. It's good to specify the packages required in a text file conventionally called requirements.txt. As you can see, I've already prepared the requirements file. Now if you want to install these packages, what you need to do is pip install minus r requirements.txt. So I've already installed these packages in my system, so we don't need to wait for this step. So we're now what we're going to do is to define two functions called read and write to do read and write data from the encrypted file. Starting with the read first. Let's import the functions to encrypt and decrypt from bfish first.
to read the data, the first step is to decrypting a file. Followed by, we can read the contents from the decrypted file. Then we have to remove the decrypted file because the passwords are now exposed there and we don't want them to be there openly, right? And finally, use json.loads to convert the content back to a dictionary. Need to import JSON too. Now for the right part. Oh, one more thing we what we can do here is that if we can check if no encrypted file is found and encapsulate this logic in a try block. So if no encrypted file is found, we can simply return an empty dictionary. Writing is similar. The first step is to dump the data in the decrypted file. Then we can call the encrypt file function imported from bfish to encrypt the data from the decrypted file. And finally, remove the decrypted file for security reasons mentioned beforehand. And voila, we are almost done. Only one last function remains. So if the account is not in the vault, it should create a new password and assign it to the account also updating the vault and finally return the password associated with the account. We need to read the data first from the file. Let's see the vault in action. First, let's take the root password as input. So now we can create a password vault instance using the root password. Let's take in the account information in a while loop. And finally, printing the password for the account. It's time to run this thing. Entering hello world as the root password. It takes a bit of time to parse the large corpus in order to get the probabilities. Now let's type in the account and the vault.get password account should return the password for the account. Trying with google.com so it generates a readable password. Facebook.com now it generates another password which is not the same as that of the google.com. If we try with google.com it should return the same old password. Trying with yahoo.com and it returns a new password. So let's do one thing. Let's try to open the encrypted file using a different root password. So if I was a hacker or someone else, I don't know what my password is. Let's try hell world. And I want to see what's the password for facebook.com. But it's showing an error. So the first time when a user runs a script, that is the encrypted file does not exist, 
n root password can be in entered. Each subsequent execution will require the same root password, thus ensuring authorized access. So that's it folks, as some follow-up work, you can grab the users and run directly from a shell like this. You can also create an UI for this, add some more features, improve the password generator to generate more readable passwords by exploiting some more properties into the model and so on. Feel free to experiment. Also encrypted files can be accessed without a password, but can be moved or deleted. So. If someone deletes the encrypted file accidentally or intentionally, oops, suddenly all your passwords will be gone. So a better approach can be to use the Google API to create the encrypted file directly into your drive or add auto backup in cloud whenever the file is updated. That's it for today. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Until next time, cheers.